Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk about how to edit pre-existing arrays. So I'm going to use the array C from the last video right now. So C is the 2x3 matrix or 2x3 array, the array that contains two rows and three columns right here. Now say I want to edit some values in here. Let's say I want to change the first column, first row element to be 20. So what I can actually do is I can specify, hey, I want to access the element in the first row and the first column, sort of like when we were getting the data back out of it. So if I just press enter right now, that would just retrieve the value in the first row, first column. But instead, if I were to set it equal to something, sort of like how we would do it with a variable. So let's say I set that equal to 20. Now, all of a sudden, C is going to remain mostly the same, except for the element in the first row, first column is going to now be 20. And a cool thing we can actually do on top of this is we can, now a cool thing we can actually do as well is we can set the value of multiple things at once. So let's say I want to change the entire second row to say negative one. So I want to say, let's take the second row and all of the columns and set them equal to negative two. And just like that, we've set everything to negative two. So this makes it really easy to edit our already existing matrices. Okay, so I'm going to start with a new matrix. I want this to be a horizontal one-dimensional array with the values one, two, three, and four, like so. Now let's say I want to add on a few extra values. Let's say I want to add on four, three, two, one, and zero. So what I can do is I can actually say, okay, well, A, what we want to do is we want to add on rows five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So I'll actually say A, so what I'll do is I'll say, okay, well, the entries of A, starting at entry number five and going to entry number nine, I want this to be set to a, uh, I want this to be set to the list of numbers starting at four, decreasing by one. So when it's decreasing by one, I want to do a negative one right here and ending at zero. So what this will do is this will put four in the fifth position of A three in the sixth position, two in the seventh position, one in the eighth position, and zero in the ninth position. So we should see an array containing one, two, three, four, four, three, two, one, zero. And just like that, that's what we have. So now let's say I have this matrix here, B equals the horizontal array one, two, and three. And let's say I want to do a whole bunch of zeros. And then in the ninth spot of B, I want to put five. So what I'll do is I'll tell MATLAB, hey, take B, and in the ninth entry, I want you to put five. And what it'll do is it'll create a whole bunch of zeros in spots four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then in the ninth spot, it will give a five. And we can double check that it is in the ninth spot. Yes, it is indeed in spot number nine. Another cool thing we can do is we'll say, okay, let's define matrix C, where the fifth position of C is the number five. And MATLAB will create a new array. It'll put, it will put zeros in the first through fourth spots, and then it'll stick a five in the fifth spot right there. So it's a very convenient way of very quickly creating a matrix with a whole bunch of zeros. Now, more cool things with matrices. I'm going to set A and B to both be one row, five column matrices, or horizontal arrays that have five entries each. And let's make some new arrays with them. So what I'm going to do is let's take a look at the array where first we'll list out all of A's entries. And then on the same row, we'll list out all of B's entries. So what this will do right here is this will basically place all of A's entries into this new array. And then it will place all of B's entries after A's entries into the new array. Now, if we want to do a vertical matrix sort of in the same way, what we can do is we can say, a transpose because we want this to be vertical and I'll do a semicolon and then B transpose. And just like that, we have a vertical array where everything in A and everything in B is combined. Um, okay. I suppose I should get back to this real quick because I just realized that I have done a little bit of an oopsie in terms of syntax. So basically when I've been, when we've been creating horizontal arrays, what I've done is I have put in commas between all of the elements like so. 
However, MATLAB also lets you just put in spaces. So one, two, three, four, like that. So really, this A space B uh, syntax that I put in right here looks a lot more like this syntax with the spaces than it does with the comma syntax that I put in just now, which is a little bit unfortunate. That's my bad. Uh, what you can also do if you want to create this matrix right here is you can say A comma B, and it'll do basically the same thing. So you're free to use commas if you want to define elements that are horizontally next to each other, or you can use spaces to define elements that are horizontally next to each other. Anyway, so for the next example, let's say that I want to make a new matrix, a two row, five column matrix with everything in A in the first row and everything in B in the second. So what we can do is we can type in A semicolon B. So on the first row, we'll put out all of A's values and then we type in a semicolon to tell MATLAB, hey, we're starting a new row. And then we put all of B's values there. And this totally works. We can do something similar with a vertical matrix where we can say A complement, comma, B complement. And that actually creates a vertical matrix like so. So we're saying, hey, do everything in A in one column and do everything in B in the second column. So now right here, we have our matrix A that we've been using before. And let's say I want to get rid of, I don't know, let's say I want to get rid of the seven right here. So if I want to do that, I can say, okay, MATLAB, take a look at the matrix A, uh, specifically at the second element of matrix A, and I want you to get rid of that completely. And you tell MATLAB to basically get rid of that by putting a zero by zero matrix or an empty matrix in there. It says, okay, I will, replace this seven with an empty matrix and then realizes, okay, well, I can't have an empty matrix, so I'm just going to put nothing there. And the result of that is now A has one less element in it. The textbook gives some pretty useful functions that we can use. So we can look at the length function. Now, if we type in length of A, it will give how many elements are in A. So the length you give in a vector and it tells you how many elements are in that vector. Now, if we type in the length of B, it will actually give the number of columns in B right here. So that's a uh, pretty interesting side effect that you should be aware of, that if you type in the length of a two-dimensional matrix, it will give you specifically the number of columns there. Now, if you want to figure out how many, uh, now, if you want to figure out the actual size of a matrix, the best way to do that is using size. So if you do size of B, it gives us a vector that represents the number of rows and the number of columns. Now, let's say we want to make a diagonal matrix using our vector A right here. So the way we would do that is we would say diag of A. And all of a sudden, now we have a four by four matrix that is all zeros except for the main diagonal. So we call this a diagonal matrix because the only non-zero elements of this matrix are in the diagonal. Now let's say we have C equals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. As a brief example, we want a square matrix for this one. Now I have a actual two dimensional matrix that I'm going to pass into Diag. So we have the same function that's about to do two different purposes. So the first purpose is that when we pass in a vector, it creates a matrix. Now, if we pass in a matrix, it's going to create a vector. This vector has all of the numbers that are along the diagonal of, in this case, C. Now, if we do something like, let's take the diag of diag of A, we'll get one, two, three, and four, which is the same thing as A, except now it is a column matrix. So the last thing I want to talk about is something called strings. So let's say I want to type, hello, my name is Iris. And there's going to be a whole bunch of weird stuff going on here in MATLAB because it doesn't like the fact that we're using all of this stuff here. But let's say that I want the sentence, hello, my name is Iris, as just a object that we can sort of pass around. So what we can actually do is we can put qu single quotes around it. So I'll say, hello, my name is Iris. Iris with a capital I because I am a person. Now notice here that everything has suddenly turned blue. And usually when you see a, a change of color in your in MATLAB, that usually means something 
different is going on. And in this case, what this means is that we have what's called a string. So a string is just an object that contains text. So the text really could be any symbol. So let's say we have, we can have numbers in here. So let's say I want to do that whole thing in LeetSpeak. That'd be H3110, uh, my N4, M3, 1F, 1, 5, uh, what would this be? 1R15, I believe. My lead speak is a little bit rusty. I, I haven't been fluent in that language since I was maybe 11 years old, so apologies if I made any mistakes. Um, and this is a, this is still a string. We can have all sorts of characters in here, so I'm just going to do some uh, cool key smashes. Look at all of these cool, awesome characters that we can put in here. The only thing we can't really put in here is a quote, because the quotes are what we use to start and stop a string. But if we do want a string that actually does contain a, string, a single quote, so let's say if I was trying to do, uh, sometimes my friends call me Riss. Well, that's a problem because now Riss right here is no longer considered part of the string, string because MATLAB sees the single quote and says, oh, well, you can't have a single quote in there because you're you're using a single quote within a string. That's a bad thing. So you can fool MATLAB into saying, okay, well, why don't we use a double quote here? And now all of a sudden, our single quote is allowed inside of this string. So you are allowed to use double quotes and single quotes. If you have a single quote string, um, I can, we can do something like, when I see my friends, I say hi. My apologies. If you forget to terminate your string, basically what you want to do is you always want to close it by making sure you have single quotes on both sides of the string, or sometimes double quotes on both sides of the string. But if you want double quotes inside of the string, you use single quotes to create the string. If you want single quotes inside of the string, you need double quotes to create that string. And if you aren't going to use either, then it's totally fine. You can use whatever. Anything is good. So strings have a few different uses. Sometimes we will use them if we want to directly talk to the user. Now, that's not something that we're really going to worry about yet, but let's say if we're trying to run a program that a user is going to use, if we need to get their input or if we need to alert them that something has gone wrong, we might be using strings there. We'll tell the computer, hey, take this string and display it to the user. So that's where it's going to be really important. We might also use strings to format some of the figures or graphs, plots, all any of that kind of stuff that we're trying to create with MATLAB. Again, more information on all this later, but just know that strings are going to be really useful. So now let's say we want to create a string that has multiple lines. So let's say I'm trying to say, my name is Iris, and I'm here to say, oh, again, I'm using a single quote in there, so I actually have to say a double quote here. My name is Iris. And I'm here to say, and you know, I'm hitting the next line of the verse, so I want to hit enter. And well, we have that same uh, string not terminated properly thing, so we can't hit enter. And if we try to use the dot 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 technique that we used in the past, well, the problem is, is that we are inside of a string, so now MATLAB code isn't really going to be recognized as MATLAB code. So we're still going to have the same problem. So what we want to do instead is we want to use char. And char is basically going to help us create a string that goes across multiple lines. Now, an interesting quirk with char is that we can't actually use double quotes like this. We actually have to use single quotes. Uh, again, I cannot tell you the reason. That is a choice that the developers have made when they're creating MATLAB. So what we'll do is I'll type in a single quote. I'll say, my name is Iris, and I'm, you'll have to excuse me for using double quotes here. And I'm here to say, I really do hope that you have a nice day. So what I've done is I have separated the lines of the verse by ending the string. And I actually totally forgot to do this. I, you have to end the string and you press comma in order to say, okay, this is the first line. Once we hit this comma, then MATLAB can say, oh, well th now this is the second line. I have to basically act as if I've pressed enter and then move on with creating this string. And once you wrap it inside of this char function, then it's basically going to create what's a what they call a 2 by 42 char array. 
And what they mean by that is they've created now a matrix of strings. So there are two rows in this matrix, and the 42 is actually referring to the number of characters in each row. So notice how the text in this row is actually longer than the text in this row, so they had to add a whole bunch of spaces in order to make these rows the same number of characters. And those characters are actually going to include things like spaces, commas, uh, punctuation marks, all that kind of stuff. So now, one last thing is that let's say we're talking, we're, let's say we're making the variable x equals uh, 200. And now I want to take a look, I want to compare that to y equals the string containing 200. And what I want to do is I want to take a look at these. So we'll type in whose. And what we'll see is that x is a one by one double. Basically, it is a scalar value. It is exactly one number. Now, y, on the other hand, is listed as a 1 by 3 char. So MATLAB actually considers this to be an array of three characters laid out horizontally. So x and y, in this case, are actually not the same thing at all. So it's important to, keep tra to make sure that you know that a number is not equal to a string containing that number. They are completely different things. So that's the whole introduction to arrays in MATLAB and strings as sort of an edge case of that, of that array. I will see you all in class. I hope you have a wonderful day.